So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be our first video on the pelvic girdle. So before we get into each os cocci, uh, we're going to differentiate pelvic girdles, male versus female. How do you tell the difference? Uh, this is going to be one of your responsibilities in class is to be able to differentiate a male from female pelvis. And there's going to be two major uh, identifications that are going to uh, allow us to do that. So let's start and by comparing and contrasting. So before we even know any of the anatomy here, if you look visually at these two pelvic girdles, you're going to notice one stark difference. The pubic angle right here is 90 degrees or less. And if you look on this pelvis, pelvis right here, the pubic angle is 100 degrees or more. So a small pubic angle, 90 degrees or less, usually indicates a male pelvis. A large pubic angle of 100 degrees or more will indicate a female pelvis. The second thing we're going to notice is on this iliac crest right here and our anterior superior iliac spines. In males, the iliac crests are going to be pushed upwards and back, whereas in females, they're going to be flattened and pushed forwards, which is why on females, you tend to see the protrusions of the anterior superior iliac spines more readily than you do see in males. The last thing we're going to notice is going to be the curvature. I'm going to see if I could turn this for you, see if we can see it. The curvature of the sacrum in females, it's flattened. It's open. If you look on the male version here, look how curved that is. It, the coccyx almost points into this, into the true pelvis region right here, almost into the space right here. Now, if you think about this, and it makes sense why we would make have differences in our pel, in our male and female pelvis, and the answer is quite simple. Uh, we need to get a baby through this space. Okay, so you need to have that sacrum pushed back. You need to have this pubic angle at 100 degrees really wide open. Okay, and this is going to allow one for the baby, the flattening of this, uh, of the iliac fossa here is going to allow first room for that baby to sit. And then when the baby moves through that pelvic girdle, the flattening of the sacrum back here and the opening of these structures right here is going to allow for that space. Since males don't have this issue, um, everything is closed off and notice I can't, I can't even try to get my fist through that space. So again, male pelvis, female pelvis, looking at one, the pelvic angle, or pubic angle, I'm sorry, two pubic angle, the flattening and pushing forward of our iliac fossa and iliac crest, and the curvature of the sacrum and the coccyx.